Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. If you're into keeping and breeding snakes, obtaining feeder rodents is going to be a constant expense that you're going to have to deal with. Today I'm going to reveal exactly how much I spent on feeder rodents in 2020 to maintain my breeding group of boa constrictors. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boa constrictors in captivity. So if you want to learn all about these amazing animals, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any upcoming boa videos. You may have noticed that the price of feeder rodents has really gone up in the last few years. And I guess this isn't surprising because the price of pretty much everything keeps going up. When you think about feeder rodents, there's a lot that goes into producing them, all of the raw materials and supplies which have gone up. And then even things like shipping, you gotta ship the supplies around and that's gone up too. So it's not surprising that feeder rodent prices continue to go up. And when you look at the price of boas, as I've commented before, a lot of boas have really gone up in price in the last few years. And a lot of it has to just do with the fact that the feeder rodents and other supplies keep going up, which is you know, somewhat unavoidable. So if you're into breeding uh, boas, you really need to worry about this rodent supply and assure that you have a constant supply. To acquire the feeder rodents for your snakes, of course, there's two main ways around this. You can buy them or you can breed your own. And a lot of people have this misconception that they can save a lot of money by breeding their own feeder rodents. And I can tell you for a lot of people, that's simply not the case. And they may actually end up spending more money breeding their own than buying them. You know, it depends on your own particular situation. If you have lots of space and lots of time and you live in an area where uh, supplies are relatively inexpensive, it might make sense to breed your own feeder rodents. But when you look at the rodent breeders, they're operating in large, large volumes on very tight profit margins. So they pretty much have it down. Um, you know, they're not really able to make the rodents any cheaper. A small time rodent breeder isn't going to have the same economy of scale and be able to operate on the same, you know, slim profit margins. So, the other thing that to consider is that breeding rodents is a lot of work. In fact, you probably can put you know, two or three times as much effort into breeding rodents than your snakes. You know, plus rodents are, have a smell, that, you know, it's objectionable, they escape. There's a lot of negative things about rodents. And then of course, a lot of people are limited on space and they probably would rather devote the space to more snakes rather than more rodents. So it really doesn't make sense to waste space that you could be using for snakes for rodents. You might be tempted to get a larger apartment or larger house, but then you're gonna pay extra in rent or mortgage for that more space. So it comes back to, are you really saving money by breeding your own rodents? That being said, I do breed some rodents and I only breed mice. And the reason being is I need a constant supply of live mice of different sizes to get my baby boas feeding. So I usually have anywhere from about three to six uh, uh, cages of rodents going. You know, each cage has a male and four females in order to generate a constant supply. But even that small amount does take quite a bit of time and effort. And I would honestly rather put that effort into my snakes rather than the rodents. So rodents are this constant unavoidable expense and you find yourself always ordering more rodents and worrying about your rod rodent supply. I have a five cubic uh, foot uh, chest freezer that I use specifically for my rodents and it holds about two months or so worth of food. But I find that I'm ordering rodents every month to month and a half and usually spending anywhere from two to $500 in order. So it really does add up. And this is a constant expense, regardless of if you're making any money from your breeding operation. You know, typically I get most of my income from breeding in the fall after the babies are born, but the rodents are pretty much a year round expense with a small respite in November, December, when my animals are into the, you know, the winter cooling period. So I'm about to reveal how much I spent on rodents in 2020, but first just some background information. I have a, you know, medium sized breeding colony. You know, I don't know exactly how many snakes I have. I get asked that question a lot. Typically I have around the three digit number mark. You know, after I have uh, babies, it goes above 100. 
I, you know, after the babies are sold, it goes below. And you know, right now I have 15 pairs set up, so 30 animals. That's probably about half of my adult breeders right there. So it's a you know good size, but not a giant colony of animals. And I, as you probably know, I slow grow. I feed sparingly, and it usually takes four to five years for my boas to reach maturity. So they're getting fed anywhere from once every two weeks to once every four weeks. And you know, if you power feed animals or feed more often, you're going to obviously pay more for rodents. So my animals typically eat anywhere from a dozen to two dozen meals per year. Usually a meal is one rodent. Sometimes I'll give two rodents. And as I mentioned, I give them off from feeding in December and January for the winter cooling. As far as mice, I raise my own mice here, but rats, chickens, quail, and any other types of feeders, I end up buying. And I buy from a few different suppliers. I try to shop around and get specials or get coupons to save on rodent uh, costs. Okay, now, so without further ado, how much did I spend? So in, on frozen rodents in 2020, I spent $3,529.24. And then as far as mouse food to feed my mice, I spent $469.74. Uh, pretty much I go through a bag, a 50 pound bag of the Missouri rodent chow every month to month and a half. So the total I spent was three thousand nine hundred and ninety eight dollars and ninety eight cents so about a dollar short of four grand and this doesn't even include the amount I spent on bedding rodent supplies cages things like that um, but you can see four grand is not a small chunk of change it'll be interesting to see how much I spend in 2021 and of course I would expect it to be more than that given how the prices of rodents have been moving in the last few years. So I thought I'd end the video by showing you a couple animals. Uh, this is actually a male that I have in breeding trials right now. This is a Tomatama Venezuela, uh, Venezuelan true red tail boa. And so this is a very rare locality boa established by Terry Cullen from animals collected at the confluences of the uh, Rio Negro and Rio Casacuare in Southern Venezuela. So it's a cool, um, locality boa. I had tried to breed my pair last year and unfortunately wasn't successful so I'm giving it another shot this year and it definitely looks like the male is interested in breeding but we'll just have to see you know hopefully the female will end up gravid and I'll get some babies later this year. Incidentally I just had my other male Venezuelan out a few minutes ago. That one is actually the other type of bloodline of Venezuelan. This is a bl the bloodline from Rio Bravo reptiles um, and the, the exact locality in Venezuela is unknown whereas this is a locality specific Venezuelan boa which you know overall it looks pretty similar to that other male and the other bloodline I have but for now this one I'm keeping as a separate Tomatama Venezuela specific locality. One more boa that I hope to have more babies of this year is the Honduran Firebelly boa. And this is a male that I produced in 2018. He's really starting to color up nicely, getting these beautiful pinks and oranges in his sides and belly. And as you can see, this guy is largely patternless. He's got a striped uh, front end and his back end is largely striped with some saddles in the middle. So really cool look. One of my favorite holdback animals that I've produced. And I have his parents paired up right now and fingers crossed that we'll have another litter of this rare locality boa, Honduran Firebelly. So I hope this video was helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, you can write them below or feel free to reach out to me via social media. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.